I, Tanya is a satirical comedy of the Olympic figure skater Tanya Harding in the style of a biography narrated by Tanya Harding, Margot Robbie, and Jeff Galuli, Sebastian Stan. Initially, the film sets the audience up for what to expect with the title card. Q, based on irony-free, wildly contradictory, totally true interviews by Tanya Harding and Jeff Galuli. The point of this setup is twofold. To let us know first that the film is meant to be interpreted by the viewer, and secondly, that the film is a comedic interpretation of the infamous tale of the Olympic figure skater Tanya Harding. In an interview for Brief Take, director Craig Gillespie explains that screenwriter Stephen Rogers found Tanya Harding after watching her special on 30 for 30 and interviewed her. He found her story and the way she told it to be fascinating. He then tracked down Jeff Galuli and interviewed him. The product was two completely contradictory stories, and Gillespie decided to intertwine the two stories, swapping point of view throughout the act so that the audience could become immersed in the film and be able to ask themselves what truly happened. In an interview with Steve Holfish for Art of the Cut, Tatiana Rigel, editor for Lars and the Real Girl, Pulp Fiction, Game of Thrones, and many others, said that her first reaction to receiving the script for I, Tanya was, really? Tanya Harding? But she describes the film as being comical, but also humane, due to the shifting tones within the film. One of the many beautiful aspects of this film is the ability to go from comedy to humanity, with a constant shadow over Tanya's life and ultimately her actions and reactions. Something that the story does well is create dynamic, flawed characters that you can't help but connect with and like in some ways. Let's take a look at some of the scenes and break them down. Something that was interesting in Rigel's interview is that she says that it's possible to connect to a vile person, such as Tanya's mother, Lavana. I wondered how that was possible, but I realized it through this scene. In this scene, Lavana is taking Tanya to the rink for the first time to get lessons from Diane. Diane has already told Lavana no, but Lavana takes Tanya to the rink anyway and tells her to skate in front of Diane. Not only is Lavana showing her dominance over others, including Diane at her own rink, but over Tanya as well. What she says goes, but for a moment it's the strong-willed mother that we can appreciate. In Lavana's assertiveness, she is showing Diane that Tanya is meant for greatness and that Lavana and Tanya will stop at nothing to get it. The subtext in this scene sets us up for the rest of the film. All right, if you didn't have the WTF moment after this scene, I don't know at what point in the film you will. We have seen how Tanya has grown up, no stranger to abuse, but this specific scene plays a lot stronger than the other abuse scenes, which play more into a stylistic choice or background information. The tension in this scene is so thick you could almost, well, should I say slice it with a knife? The performances have a lot to do with the pace of the tension, as well as the pace of the edit. We start off with Lavana telling Tanya that her performance was horrible and that she gives everything to Tanya's skating, reaffirming Tanya's pressure to perform better and better, no matter how well she does. It's never good enough. Lavana never lets Tanya speak, and when she does, she's punished. Tanya has clearly gone through enough abuse already, but this escalation causes Tanya to get frightened. It's something that's hard to do. She's scared of no one. The stakes are raised when Lavana begins throwing things at Tanya until the final moment of tension reaches its peak. We cut back and forth from medium shots to reaction shots throughout this entire scene. While first speaking to Tanya, the shots are a little slower paced, giving us a medium two shot to a reaction, then back to the medium two shot to see a little bit of Lavana's personality. 
cue putting her cigarette out in the potatoes. Once the tension picks up, the pacing of the cut picks up as well, allowing for the tension to peak once Lavana throws the knife. Then, silence. We hang there together. The audience is in just as much shock as Tanya and Lavana are, and that makes for even more tension, until it's finally diffused by a cut to Lavana's interview. This scene always struck me for how powerful of a performance Margot Robbie gave as Tanya Harding. In this particular scene, we can see how much pain Tanya is experiencing. Throughout this entire film, we see Tanya as a strong woman. She fights back when she needs to and doesn't take any crap from anybody. But in this scene, we see her human side. The lack of music is powerful in that the scene is completely raw. It's just Tanya and her emotions. I wanted to address the boxing match because I believe Frigel does a great job intercutting these last scenes together. She uses match cuts to show us the intersection of Tanya's life with two significant points in her life, when she landed a triple and when she had to become another person. By using a match cut between the boxing match and the triple, we can see just how far off Tanya's life has gone, as well as the similarities between the two events. Honestly, it's quite a beautiful use of editing. Speaking of editing, let's get into some of the specific stylistic choices used by Rigel throughout the film. First, we have the technique of the interviews. The interviews were filmed in one continuous take, with the actors set up in front of one camera on a tripod. Rigel used the interviews to break up tension, give background into characters, or manipulate the point of view. She used the audio from the interviews to lead into or out of scenes, as well as using it for voiceover. Gillespie also used breaking the fourth wall as an option for Rigel in the edit, as the scenes were shot both with and without breaking the fourth wall. Rigel explains that Gillespie saw an interview with Tanya when she was 15, explaining very matter-of-factly to the camera her mother's abuse, and Gillespie wanted to replicate that level of emotional detachment with victims of abuse. Rigel and Gillespie found that intertwining the voiceover interviews with the breaking of the fourth wall made for a good emotional detachment from the scene. I would like to commend this film for several aspects, but mostly for the development of flawed characters. Aside from the acting and writing, the development of these characters through the use of smart editing gives the viewer an easy time relating to these characters in some way. There are several ways that each character is given their own personal arc, and we know just enough about each of them to make our own assumptions about what happened. For Tanya, her character is first set up with a setup of Lavana. As children, we are mostly our parents. As for the most part, we cannot think or act for ourselves. And when Lavana makes Tanya skate in front of Diane, she is setting Tanya up for the person that she will be and life she will eventually lead. Lavana even admits to Tanya that she made Tanya a champion and knew Tanya would hate her for it. Lavana constantly vies for power over Tanya, no matter her age, and we can see that in the kiss your mother scene. Lavana tells Tanya that she is supportive of her abusive relationship with Jeff, and when Tanya has had enough, she shows Tanya that she still holds the power. I think the last gut-wrenching scene for Lavana is when she visits Tanya after the incident happens and she tells Tanya that she's proud of her, but then asks if she has anything to do with the incident. Tanya finds out that she's recording her, a final break in Tanya's trust for the last time. Tanya's development begins when she wins a medal for the first time at four years old. In her interview, she explains that the other girls didn't know what hit them, 
and her attitude about her competitive spirit and winning is revealed. When Tanya's father leaves, her life changes and her destiny is sealed. As we transition from child to teen, seeing Tanya take on more of her mother's personality and finally becoming her own person. Tanya was destined to be something big, but her actions and reactions to the events that unfolded in her life prevented her from being the star that she could have been. She is the first American woman to ever land the triple axle jump in a competition. The triple was Tanya's peak, and her downfall was, in her view, getting back with Jeff and letting him back into her life after all the situations they went through. I mean, he shot her for goodness sake. Jeff and Sean are lumped into one character study because to me, they are a package deal. In this film, Jeff and Sean are shown to, as being a match made in criminal heaven. In a crime with two individuals, there is usually a dynamic of accomplice and mastermind. Jeff is the accomplice and Sean is the mastermind. Both Jeff and Sean are shown as being individuals who are weak, separate, but together they have great stupidity and can do even greater harm. The interview tapes are the biggest insight into their personalities, as it shows just how manipulative and delusional Sean is, and just how much of a pushover Jeff is. Jeff and Sean's personality shows through in the rest of the film as being very surface level, but it is in these interviews that the evidence in the film is contradicted. How is Jeff such a meek guy in the interview, but such a raging abuser to Tanya? I think that's what the film does well. It gives us contradictory angles and is constantly shifting in point of view so that the viewer is able to make his or her own assessment of the situation. And in the words of Tanya herself, That's the fucking truth.